Good afternoon. I'm Sala Sander, and you are watching League TV, a service of the League of Women Voters of Sheboygan County. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan, grassroots political organization established in 1920 that advocates for informed and active participation in government. Our members are women and men who work to improve our systems of government and impact public policies through education and advocacy. The League neither supports nor opposes candidates for office at any level of government. Today, we are interviewing Marcos Guevara, an incumbent candidate for a position on the Sheboygan Area School District Board of Education. Marcos, before we begin the interview, we want to thank you for agreeing to meet with us today and also for investing your time and resources in running for office. Uh, gracias, Sala. Um, <laughs> hola a todos. I'm Marcos Guevara. I'm running for uh, school board, and I hope I have your support um, uh, for my re-election campaign. Uh, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for inviting me to be on here and uh, giving me the opportunity to share a little bit about what I believe in. Thank you. So as an incumbent, uh, what skills would you bring to the Sheboygan Area School District this time around? Well, I think it starts um, with uh, uh, the basics, right? Uh, our four children attended Sheboygan Area Schools. The first one at Jackson Elementary starting in 1998 for a couple of years when I got out of the US Navy while I was getting my master's degree in international management. Her brothers and sister will have done most of their education so far in this district. Being one year apart, the brothers will be SASD graduates soon. Uh, one was last year from Etude High School and one will be this year from Warner High School. And then completing the story is the youngest sister who start high school this fall. So I've got some experience as, as a parent and watching some students. But I've also always manifested my interest in education through my own academic pursuits. But more importantly, I've always supported teachers, staff and students and their families by involving myself with our local schools. I was part of the site-based team at Jackson Elementary and then the a Square Charter Board there and then passed to the Warner Schools Board until my current two-year tenure at the, at the school board district, at the district board, oh, sorry. Uh, professionally, I like to focus on finance, operations, and strategy with an emphasis on how systems produce equitable outcomes. I see people and I seek to elevate their voices and lived experiences, especially those who have traditionally been left out of the conversation. Uh, I believe this focus uh, and this experience uh, makes me an uh, excellent candidate for the school board. Thank you. You have touched a little bit about this question, but this uh, uh, second question, what do you think the school district should do to improve equity in education? I think this is probably the topic that, is, that I'm most passionate about. Uh, following the proven principles of universal design, in education, uh, more properly called universal design for learning, I want to push our community to focus on the educational outcomes of all the people we serve, especially those who have historically been impeded from the outcomes that I have enjoyed. This starts by centering our efforts on the access that we bring to people and communities who have historically had the least access to education. A recent article in the Sheboygan Press highlighted the rate of failing grades on tests in the past term, completely erasing the fact that this metric was, has always been an issue. Why did it grow by 10% during a largely unprecedented global health and economic crisis? I want to talk about why it was 20% of students before the crisis. But even there, I think the conversation misses the mark. Are grades really the metric we should follow? I think that given the advances we've seen broadly since public schooling started almost a century ago, we can find a better way of understanding how much a student has learned and how well we're imparting knowledge. Better yet, let's recognize the agency that students have in their own education and engage them in the process uh, instead of limiting ourselves to having them passively suffer through a process that doesn't serve them well. Thank you. How should the school board inform their decisions to best deal with COVID-19 going forward? For me, uh, this is a really easy question. Uh, first, do no harm and heal people. 
my position has always been that one preventable illness, one preventable harm is one too many. If road accidents cause more harm this, than this X thing at school, that doesn't mean that this X thing at school should be dealt with or that there's an acceptable level of harm that we should talk about. What it means is that we need to address road safety in addition to this X thing at school. Um, yes, the pandemic has had some serious uh, impact on access uh, to education, but I think the school has done its job at attempting to keep the impact of the pandemic from being worse than it has been so far. Thank you. What do you recommend the district does to attract and retain quality staff? Um, I think it's really important that as a community, we make Sheboygan a, wel a more welcoming place. Um, we need to focus our efforts on becoming a beloved community, what, uh, what Bell Hooks uh, has, has promoted it, uh, as, as a beloved community where, where people can exist uh, not free of conflict. Uh, I think conflict is a, is a natural piece of existing with another human. Uh, but understanding that conflict calls on us to, to lean into and to escalate our, our level of engagement. Um, so far, uh, I think this, this kind of conception of being in community is, is missing. And uh, I'm looking forward to engaging with people in places like this one uh, with the League of Women Voters, or as we say in Spanish, La Liga de Mujeres Votantes. Um, and, and, you know, having that, that conversation and understanding that we don't have to agree, but we all have to respect each other's dignity. Thank you. What do you see as the most important role of the school board and why? Uh, well, there's there's several, but so so I'm trying to pick how I would characterize the most important one. I think we are supposed to be the eyes and the ears of the people of Sheboygan. Um, we we focus on what are the educational outcomes we seek. We we try to be in conversations that help define that answer. What are the educational outcomes we, we seek? How are we pursuing them? Who is at the table to determine what those outcomes are and how we're ensuring that everybody has access to those outcomes, um, how resources are allocated to pursue those outcomes. In service of that, the school board uh, with uh, in community, in, in, in work with the executive management team have, uh, and staff, teachers and students have articulated uh, some principles of equity. That work has only started. I think we need to, so for me in, in the coming uh, three years, the focus of the board needs to be on fully articulating those principles of equity to make sure that, that education is accessible to everybody in Sheboygan. Thank you. This final question is uh, a little long, so bear with me. Since 2017, Wisconsin stature requires graduating high school students to take a civics test comprised of the same 100 questions that may be asked of an individual applying for US citizenship. Students must correctly answer 65 of these questions. In non-presidential election years, Spring voter turnout in the city and county has been between 20 and 40%, even though this election determines who runs local government and the Board of Education. And much has been written lately about US citizens general lack of knowledge about the constitution, the election system, and the critical role of compromise in a democracy. Do you think the current civics education offered in the district goes far enough to educate and engage young citizens in the democratic process? Wow. Um, I think that's a fantastic question. The, the, the quick answer is no. I, I absolutely don't think that we do enough in civics. 
Uh, but I also don't think that this, the civics test questions would answer that. Just like I don't think that tests on, on that grades on tests answer how much a person knows about something or, or how much a person is engaged with the topic. So, you know, off the bat, I think focusing on, on, the, on the statistics you gave on this test could help, right? We, we could impart more rote knowledge on people, but I don't think that makes better citizens, right? Uh, things are complicated. We can't reduce issues to, to 30 second videos, 100 word paragraphs, 240 character statements. We can't reduce issues to a test. Uh, we have systems that have caused harm and are continuing to cause harm. And we can't start healing individually and as a community until we've acknowledged our part in, in these har harmful systems and have started to address how the systems can be changed. Um, we can't, we have to make sure that everybody understands that the public sector cannot operate in the same form as the private sector does. Productivity and profit, don't get me wrong, have a place but it's not even close to the center of where public administration needs to be and civic engagement needs to focus on. And then uh, finally, I think we need to have a conversation about engagement. Um, who, is, who is participating in the public square? Who is taking space in the public square? What are their motives? What are the outcomes they seek? How do we engage? How are we in community with them? Uh, and, and more importantly, we need to look in our public square and identify the people that are missing and, uh, and why they're missing. And I think that's what your question goes, goes to is when we look at our public square, we see a whole bunch of people missing because we haven't engaged them. We haven't made civics, civism, citizenship, um, neighborhoodliness, uh, to make up a new word, uh, uh, accessible to them, right? We haven't, we haven't involved them in a way that helps them understand that, that local elections matter, that, uh, that being part of our systems is important, that um, empathy is uh, valued, right? That, that, that uh, a beloved community requires everybody to be in community. Um, and that's the conversation that I, that I want to have, uh, rather than focusing on these hundred things that you have to answer correctly. How do we ensure that we're all in it, that we understand that we're all in it, um, and, the, and that the outcomes that we seek uh, help everybody, lift everybody. Marcos, thank you so much for taking the time to interview with us today. The League of Women Voters strongly encourages all who are eligible to vote in the upcoming general election on April 6. If you are one of the 20,000 eligible citizens in our county not registered to vote, you may sign up easily on myvote.wi.gov, or you may contact your municipal clerk for more information. Other League TV interviews may be found on our website including our conversations with five of the candidates for the school board. Marcos, thank you uh, again, and you have a great evening. Thank you, Salah. Thank you, Brenda. And thank you to the League of Women Voters for offering me this opportunity to speak to everybody. <laughs>